Hello YouTube, I fix it all here, team I fix it all. Um gosh, here we go, another garden video. Um So we're going to get um our own seeds, right? I noticed when I had my cherry tomatoes, I was getting um there's two areas, one section of where I have veggies, there was a volunteer cherry tomato that popped up in my strawberry patch. Um, how that happened is because I have a big uh, drum outside that we were composting, throwing scrap foods in. Over the course of the year 2021, I believe that works out right. So, in spring of 2022, I took all that compost out of that 55-gallon composter drum, 55-gallon one. It was like half full, maybe. And uh, part of that contributed toward the, um, the dirt that I planted my strawberries in and a volunteer cherry tomato plant popped up and it's god it's going gangbusters um matter of fact let's walk outside and take a look at it um it's very different than the uh, cherry tomato variety that i have in the garden area in our raised garden bed right there's our tomatoes several varieties up here this is a volunteer cherry tomato plant it has gone crazy all right so let's call this the strawberry bed cherry tomato plant um they're decent size, but there's something different about them. And they're just hanging in gobs. The plant itself has really, really good genetics. Now, if you're a seed collector or you're trying to learn how to collect seeds, think like that. Pick your most robust plant variety. And then include another tomato and maybe a third tomato in the mix with that. This will help the... Uh, I'm zoomed in again, damn it. Because notice, it's not just cherry that's in here. There's this tomato, and I don't know what this is. Kind of looks like it's threatening to be a beefsteak, but... Maybe not. So, when you save your seed back, you want to pick the largest one. And if you can't find another largest one, pick the next best one you can settle for. And then maybe a third one and collect the seed from all that. Dry it out. Dry the seed out. Use that for your seed next year. Now you're going to have to look up what's, what is the lifespan of doing that. Um, if you just pick one tomato and you use the seed from that for next year, and then you pick one of those tomatoes and use the seed from that for the next year, eventually you're not going to have any tomatoes because it cannot cross-pollinate. The genetics isn't there. It, it's all down to common sense. Uh, <laughs> Tony and breed your tomato plants <laughs> like humans. So um, that cherry tomato is. <clears throat> We're seeing a cat fight here. Or are they playing? Guys, knock it off. Who's quit? George, Buki. Break it up. Come on, guys. Quit. Quit. No. No. 
No. Spray them little suckers. No, Bookie. Bookie. God almighty. Hey. Guys. Hey, Bookie. Bookie. Quit. Family troubles. Gosh. Back to tomatoes. So this variety here. Is everybody all right? Is everybody okay? The difference in these are possibly size which are in my raised bed. Notice I had no, I didn't um, separate beef steaks from cherry. We kind of did that on purpose because we knew we had large tomatoes and we had tiny tomatoes. We've got beef steaks uh, right over here from cherry they should have cross pollinated but anyway it's mid-september and these things are still coming on strong and then we've got these other variety here which i don't know uh, i think these are abe lincoln's which is a uh, heirloom breed let me just get to my damn point the um when I sliced those tomatoes in half so that I could scoop out the seed, when I sliced those tomatoes in half, I noticed they had a hell of a lot more pulp in them. And when I sliced this tomato in half, it was juicier. It had a lot more juicy and less pulp. And what I'll probably do is I'll grab a... Uh, I'll grab a cherry here and demonstrate what I'm trying to explain to you because it's kind of important. Let me find one that looks like a good candidate. Looking, looking. Here we go. Alright, that's a good tomato for a a sample this has a lot more to do with people who take their tomatoes and put them up for either tomato juice or for salsa or tomato soup or spaghetti sauce to me I like a thick tomato e tomato e spaghetti sauce that's hard to achieve in a homemade um, situation let's see what I can cut on here hmm arg okay let me just use this plate here and I'll Show you what I'm talking about. All right, the purpose of this video is to keep your eye out for the accidental discovery that you might have a different breed of cherry tomato or a different breed of vegetable. Which tomato has more pulp in it? These two tomatoes came from the strawberry patch way up there. And this tomato came out of the garden. Both of them are classified as cherry. The one that's more pulpy, pulp -y, pulp, which is what you want in a situation where you're trying to do spaghetti sauces or perhaps tomato soup. Uh, maybe, maybe not. This would be the tomato juice, maybe salsa, but look at the difference. All 
a lot more pulp in this variety than this variety. So I am going to personally, I'm going to put up seed from the garden. This, I'm going to call it juicy cherry. And then when I extract the seed from these guys, I'm going to call it pulpy cherry. I don't know what kind of cherry it is, but I do know that <clears throat> these uh, volunteers that came up have genetically crossbred in such a way that they have become a good candidate for spaghetti sauces and what have you. Now I think there might be a sacrifice to this is that you probably lose in the quantity of seed. As you can tell there's less seed here. It makes these a little bit more uh, precious to me. I, I've got to make sure I get enough. Not every seed is going to grow. Now, I started the video out 11 minutes ago babbling on, but really the, per the main purpose of this video is to show you how I put up seed. And normally what I do is I slice these open. Oops, let me get this here, paper towel. First thing I did was I sliced the, the tomato open on a paper towel. And I get the seed out, spread it out. Then I spread it out on half of this paper towel. Then I fold the clean side over, pat it down, try to absorb as much water as I can. And then I open it up. And then I'll scrape the seed around a little bit just to get the paper towel to absorb as much water as possible. And then I'll get them off the paper towel and put them on a paper plate and label it. And the objective here is to get these spread out as far apart as possible with the least amount of them touching and then the next thing is to set them somewhere where you know it's always going to be somewhat warm-ish and right now this time of year for us uh, I've got to redo a couple of uh seed platters because I just simply stack them up in my garage over here and what happened to my yellow crookneck squash summer squash some of them were starting to mold so I'm going to delete this and hope I get another yellow crookneck squash or check my inventory of seed and see if I have any more and then my white patty pan squash. Some of that is molding. And I think it's because I've got so many windows open in the garage here. It's And I've got the door kind of blocked open all the time. It's not getting as warm in the garage. So I'm going to do something a little different on drying out seed. I'm going to pause the video. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing to uh, try something different on seed. And it's not high risk different. It's, uh, I know this will work different. So hang tight. Well, I may have screwed up there. I turned the phone. So, even though Gregory is a project right now, or Carmen Gia, um, what I do know is that it gets really, it gets pretty warm in there, especially with the tarp up. But, notice we have inside Gregory is our
juicy cherry maters. So that's no harm, no foul. It's a, a good environment. It's going to be warmer than natural. Um, the windows are rolled up and I think that'll be a good spot for them. I could put them in the back of the Bronco because nothing ever happens in the back of the Bronco. I could secure them in the trunk of my Cougar because that's always going to be a warm place. I could also stage them up in the attic of the garage on a shelf, but I don't know if there's critters up there that might gnaw on them. But what I want to do is just dry them out differently because on my garage I've been kind of keeping the door a little propped open because I felt sorry for cats. Um, anyway, noticing the difference in your vegetables is probably something you should pay attention to if you're going to be putting seed up. Uh, the juicy veggies are the hardest ones to control. You're always going to want a warm, dry environment to help evaporate that water off. And so, um, that brings this video to an end. But, hey, wait, Nat. Again, when you discover a a difference in your vegetables, you may want to pause and think, okay, how do I work this to my advantage for the family for next year? And, or how do I work this to your, uh, my advantage for, uh, helping a neighbor out or sharing with someone else? All right. Think like that. <clears throat> and you, uh, you might, have a you might end up uh, winning over an ally over the long haul. See ya.